people have asked why we've got tires on the boat well there's a shelf sticking out underneath the water level so um, it keeps the boat further away from the bank and stops it banging against this shelf that's just below the water level so no we haven't taken up wheel power again it's been two weeks but one day since we filled the tank up with water we've been really frugal with our consumption and uh, we need to get rid of the rubbish also we've been collecting other people's rubbish out of the canal so we've got quite a bit stashed down there um, so we're gonna do that fill up turn around come back but we're not going to moor up where we were before, we're just going to creep another couple of miles closer to Middlewich uh, in the country a bit and um, because we're going to creep closer to Middlewich over the next few days or so to the next water point that way and go and see the boats, uh, see the progress, hopefully lots has been done to it, we've uh, had a few setbacks um, with um, people there being ill and also having to self-isolate for days at a time so not much has been done I'm afraid um, but you can go and view properties if you're moving house and you can move house in this lockdown as it is so we've reasoned that we can go and see the boat as it's our next home and obviously we'll take all precautions face masks distancing etc so be great to go and see it and see what's been done we've um, not been there for a month so hopefully the guys have been able to uh, crack on with it now we were hoping to be on board by now but uh, it's understandable given the circumstances eh? Well, it's a cold day it's about zero two degrees something like that Celsius and it feels really strange moving the boat. It's, uh, you get sort of lockdown fever. You sense a, you get a bit cosy just stuck in the same place. You you don't want to move. You just think, oh, we'll, we'll move another day, and you you put it off and you put it off, and then it becomes a bigger thing than it actually is moving the boat. So yeah, it's lovely. He stood on the back here. Fran's downstairs getting dressed and just doing the washing up. That's why I volunteered to come up here. So. Nothing else to report, all the same, no change. We haven't even been doing any filming, uh, purely because we've nothing new to film. We've been doing the same walks, seeing the same murmuration, going to the same shops uh, for two weeks, well for a month now we've been stuck here. So. Uh, I think a change of scenery will do us good and um, looking forward to it. We're actually going to moor up in the same spot we were at at Christmas, uh, which we know has got a Wi Fi signal there. So, yeah, on the move.
that's what you call lazy vlogging. Point the camera where you're going and stick it on time lapse. With a bit of music over the top. <laughs> Haven't thought about this at all. <laughs> so I've turned around and uh, two miles to go to the water point. So just take it easy, take it slowly. No rush. We've been doing we've been doing pretty well with our uh, walking challenge, our challenge to walk a thousand miles this year. But we're only recording the miles we actually walk together, not uh, separately. So um, we're up to about 106 miles so far in January. It's now February the 2nd. So yeah, doing quite well on target with a bit of luck to be to have done it by maybe September, October. Yeah. I think I'll speed up a bit. We are actually just crawling along. Since we've been shut down, locked down with nowhere to go, we've really got the wanderlust. We're really missing travelling, we're missing different scenery, different people, uh, different architecture. It's, uh, you know, well, I guess everybody is, you know, we're all in the same boat worldwide. And it's just become very, very boring now. We've taken to watching a lot more vlog channels than we would normally. We don't tend to watch narrowboat channels anymore, it's just the exception of one or two. But um, we love campervan travels and we've just found a new channel called um, Lost in Europe. And this single guy called Ash. And uh, he came, came up on our recommended for you list with his last video that he put up a couple of days ago. And he's in Sweden in minus 37, no, minus 27 degrees centigrade. Wow. But anyway, um, we've rolled right the way back to the beginning of his vlogs, uh, number one. So we've got 285 to go. I think we've watched six so far. But uh, yeah, he's an easygoing chap. Uh, I'm really interested to see where his journey takes him. This is over the last uh, two and a half, three years or so. So we've got some catching up to do. And if you want to suspend your belief, you could watch Vikings on Amazon. We started watching that many years ago, well, about four years ago when we were in the house and gave up on it when we moved onto the boat. But we've now started watching the game from the beginning. Uh, it's quite interesting, but uh, I think you need to take it with a pinch of salt. So that's the extent of our cultural viewing. Fran's going to uh, give the dogs a walk when we get to the bridge further up. She's going to jump off again and walk the dogs to the water point. It took us a full hour last time to fill up with water. We've got this really rubbish hose which is about half an inch bore, it takes forever. So uh, new boat, new hose methinks. Fran found the bank yesterday to um, rearrange our money and open up a savings account for the money that we got from the sale of the house and which are obviously a large proportion of is going into uh, the new boat. Man alive, you would think we were living on Mars. They just could not grasp the idea that we were living on a boat and we just wanted to use my daughter's address for our postal address. It was like meltdown. <laughs> and she had to put Fran on hold. Fran was on the phone for an hour, over an hour, trying to sort it out with them. In the end, the girl says, I'll ring you back. 
and then she rang back a couple of hours later and uh, said there's been much machinations at this end discussions about how we can work this blah 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 but anyway they've accepted it that uh, we live on a boat and uh, we're using my, our daughter's address for correspondence unbelievable and this is one of the real problems of um, this way of life now about life is doctors banking dentists it's um, it's not easy you know they all want an address they all want to tie you down to somewhere and doctors it's, I've got to go to the doctors I need some more asthma uh, inhalers and I'm just putting it off and putting it off because I know it's going to be a battle um, when we're when I'm, when I'm there organizing it you think you'd think if you've got an NHS number and proof of identity you'd be able to go anywhere in this country for medical treatment but uh, apparently not here she comes <laughs> hello <laughs> got a feeling of deja vu here. <laughs> the only difference being it's not raining today, huh? No, and it was supposed to be. We weren't looking forward to this, were we? Because no. uh, the forecast was for double raindrops, 95% or above, all day. So, as much as we're bored with doing this journey now, this is a bonus because it's dry. And the other bonus is that when we stop for water and everything, there's some good showers there. Yes. And I'm going in there for half an hour. We're going to have a nice hot shower instead of a tepid, cool one. <laughs> so it's a housework day, isn't it, today, really? Water, and, uh, rubbish. Yeah. And luck would have it, it's started raining since you've come up. And look what I've got. Mind your head on this bridge. Good okay to come up. As we go past our old mooring spot, I need to replenish the bird feeders because the birds have been all over them this morning and they're empty yesterday. They finished off the last fat ball, so we're going to fill them up before we move on, leave them there, and I'll make some more. And also, we don't have bin bags, but I've got a coal bag and my litter picker. And so we've been being okay. upset by okay. the rubbish. <laughs> So I thought there's no point in just being appalled and upset by it. Nobody else is going to clear it up. I can't clear it all up because there's mattresses and blankets and duvets, but human waste, which yeah. But I will do my best. So we did our Royal Society for the Protection of Birds count <laughs> the other day on Sunday, didn't we? Yep. And what did we see, Fran, in the course of an hour? Oh my gosh. Uh, Four long-tailed tits, three other birds, <laughs> three blue tits, we saw great tits, a robin, a blackbird, a buzzard, yeah, a magpie, I think that's it, and we couldn't count them, but just the, as I was standing, wren, two wrens, oh wrens, yeah. yeah, but as I was standing for my hour looking out the windows, a whole flock of lapwings were circling over the boat. There must That's have been hundreds of them, wasn't 300. There? We can't count, we, we couldn't count them anyway. You can't count 300 flying birds, but you can't include them when they're flying. But I wouldn't have seen them if I'd not been just standing still watching. And as much as we think we're quite observant, we're not, we must miss loads of stuff. <laughs> so um, we did say we might just spend an hour just standing looking from time to time now. Well, why not? We've got all the time in the world for standing and staring, as the man in the poet said. The and man in the poet. The man in the poet. <laughs> Lockdown <laughs> is having lots of effects, including um, we've, we've become a bit, uh, I'm not going to say lazy, a bit stagnated. I and have the, been talking about this. Oh, have you? Yeah. 
Well, there you not, go. Not to too much detail. But um, a journey like this, we just is a chore now. We like we don't particularly want to move. I guess because we're not going anywhere new, are we? No. But you wake up in the morning and it's sort of eleven o'clock before we're doing anything. And um, I think it's the same for everybody. We need to get our va va voom back. I was reading an article in the paper the weekend about um, this very this very thing: your brain becoming stagnant because you're staring at screens for too long during the lockdown and you're not thinking how you used to think. So uh, there, there's a few exercises to get your brain back into gear. And what were they then? Well, one of them, which I woke up this morning doing and I got as far as K before I became bored, is think of two countries of, in the alphabet. So two countries beginning with A, B, C. Oh. So you start off with Azerbaijan. Argentina. Belarus, B B Belgium. See and like that, and uh, <laughs> it's quite a good exercise actually. It doesn't get you rum, especially when you get to X Xanadu. Is that? <laughs> I thought you were going to say especially when you get to X amount of years old. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but what, what country begins with X? I can't think of one. No. And why? My brain went Uruguay, but oh. Uruguay. <laughs> Yugoslavia? No, no, it doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't but exist anymore, but it's, uh... The other thing that we noticed in the weekend paper was a double spread on all their different crossword books that they do. Yeah. Didn't they? So we, we are going to purchase several crossword books. Right, I've got to get ready because I'm getting off with the dogs in a moment and doing my duties. We're going to pass a boat in a minute that's very recognisable to some viewers, but we can't mention it, so no. I'm going to have to turn the camera away, I'm afraid, because <laughs> he might not want us or to they, tell you... Or she. they, or she. They. Might not be a he. No, it could be a them. <laughs> might not want us to uh, let you know where they are, so... I don't think he's on board anyway. Or she, or they. Or they. <laughs> I need to show you something, just as I'm picking up all this rubbish from a pile here. I found something really interesting. I don't have my specs with me, um, so I'm just going to film it and have a look and see what it is later. I'll show you. Some kind of really interesting mushroom. I've got no idea. I've never seen anything like it. But amidst all this rubbish, nature still pushing up little bits of beauty. It's amazing. Anyway, on with my job. But well, I've had to walk away. I can't tell you how disgusted I am because I've got my bag of rubbish. Um, and while I'm picking it up, I've turned around and seen Archie and I don't want to offend to anybody, but there was a huge pile of human poo with toilet paper all around it and without being <laughs> too uh, explicit Archie was in the midst of it I just <laughs> speechless so this is the remnants of what stopped us from moving on Friday for water and uh, it went right across the canal completely blocked it there's the stump the other side so Fortunately, it was all cleared yesterday and no, we won't be collecting the firewood, not without getting a huge barge to store it on for two years. But at least we can get to water now, so there you go. Uh, I had to stop filming back there because there was just nothing more to say about it really. But I'm just walking along thinking about it and I don't know what we do about this problem. Most of the canals, I would say 95% of it is lovely, is clean and there's no problem sorry my bag of rubbish is really heavy <laughs> but you've got the odd spot like that where it, it would seem that once there's one or two pieces of rubbish everybody thinks it's okay to drop their rubbish there 
it doesn't help that beyond us, behind me, there's no rubbish facilities for ages. They were about a mile and a half in front of me from where that was, and that's where I'm carrying the rubbish to. But it was obviously boaters' rubbish amidst all the stuff that was there was fenders, old um, fire extinguishers, uh, just everything. Um, and I don't know what we do. If I report it to CRT, I guess they will come down and clear it up. But is it their responsibility to clear up other people's rubbish? I don't know. Hi. I guess maybe if we all just did our little bit every time we go out, take a bag. You know, I don't think you're ever going to change these people. I don't think they're ever going to stop leaving stuff behind them like that because I just don't think they care and I don't think they'll ever care. And I don't suppose for one minute anybody that's watching this video would even dream of doing that. So, I don't know. These guys have been the absolute lifesavers of boaters. They've been going through the snow, through the really bad cold weather. They break the ice to get through and they've been travelling, I know, well into the night some nights, in the dark, um, just to get our surprise to us all. And I don't know where we'd be without them. And they're always cheerful. Thanks, Roberta. Cheers. Thank you. It's been a couple of weeks. Why did you be back at Bolly? Uh, she wanted to go up there. Oh, really? Yeah, so she just stays down here now. We've got Orchard up there, and then Vargas who does the rest of the workout. Anyway. That's that done. It's uh, it's now quarter to three. We've been we left four hours ago. So it's an hour's cruising to get there. An hour's filling up. Half an hour having lunch and half an hour in the shower. But uh, it would have we had to wait for a while because on the way in, a guy that was moored up decided he was just going to push off in front of me to so he'd get to the water point before me. So he waited. No, he, he, un, he had his boat uh, unmoored and he saw me come round the corner and he didn't know what to do so in the end he just threw the rope on the boat, jumped on and took off. Well I was only, by the time he took off I was only two boat lengths behind him. So he then hogged the middle of the canal so I couldn't get past, so I uh, let him get on with it. I, I did laugh, but uh, when we stopped at the water point, yes, he was ahead of me, so he got to the water point first, and uh, I had to wait for him to finish. We did have words, <laughs> as you can imagine. It's going to be my 60th birthday in two months, and uh, I can't believe it. It's just unbelievable. I do. And it just... <laughs> I can't believe it. It's unbelievable. But it seems like the older we get, the more things we discover that we want to do, don't we? You know, yeah. who knew when we were 40 that we wanted to live on a boat or we wanted to do camper vanning or all sorts of things. We didn't know when we were younger. It's only now that we've decided and discovered all these things to do. So... So we've got to squeeze in in our autumn and winter years uh, camper vanning around Europe which I discussed about earlier canal <laughs> cruising still yeah and uh, living in a croft in Scotland yeah or at least having a little bit of land maybe Somewhere. Yorkshire or yeah. out of the way um, the gardening aspect of things were, were missing especially this time of year it just the actual physical sowing of seeds and uh, well, we could always dig in the ground. More up near a town, and you can get yourself a gardening job. Oh yeah, an allotment. Just saying. We've uh, just come back from Middlewich. Uh, walked into town, had a quick look at the boat, and uh, 
it's kind of coming on <laughs> but uh, we've still got confidence it'll all be done by end of Feb early March so uh, more about that in the next video yes yeah. well that's about it for this one see you all next time take care see you soon cheers bye, bye.